Welcome to Truths, Proofs, and Firewater Reviews. I'm your host, Lindsay, and this is John, risking his liver to discover new whiskeys. We base our reviews on a 25-point scale, 5 for the smell, 10 for the taste, 5 for the finish, and a combined 5 for the bottle and look of the juice. So today we will be making some eggnog. It's Lindsay's getting to be famous eggnog. Uh, we made one batch so far and I absolutely love it. Based off an Alton Brown recipe, it uses just the yolks so you can save the egg whites for a later use. You wanna start out? What are we doing? Okay, so I already separated my eggs and the yolk and the white, so I just, these are just the yolks. There's 12 of them. Um, so we're gonna start off, we're gonna add a teaspoon of uh, nutmeg. So how many egg yolks? 12. And then we're gonna do two cups of just granulate sugar. Granulate? Granulated? Tip tap. Mm -hmm. Either way. So then you're just gonna whisk this, which obviously right now it's not gonna whisk very well. Um, as it starts to incorporate, it'll loosen up a little bit. I thought we had the whisk later, a whiskey. Sorry. So you want it like a steady ribbon, steady stream. You just want to make sure it's all really well incorporated. So we're gonna set that aside, move on to our liquids. So you're gonna do a pint or two cups each. This is a pint size, this is heavy whipping cream. So we're gonna add that in. So that's two cups. This is two cups. And then half and half, we're gonna measure out two cups. So this is four cups in here. And dump that in. And then just whole milk. It cannot be skim. It cannot be 1%, 2%. It's got to be whole. So if you're not a milk drinker, sorry about your luck. All if right. you're not a milk drinker, you're probably not a raw egg drinker either. <laughs> probably not. We'll, we'll run with that. Okay. So I thought it was kind of funny. Half and half is half milk, half cream. This is based off an Elton Brown recipe, so... It has to have some significance. We're not gonna question it. We're just gonna do it. To, yeah, to use them separately. Yeah. All right. So then you pick um, your rum. So his recipe calls for a cup of rum, a cup of bourbon, and a cup of cognac. We just stuck to a cup and a half of bourbon and a cup and a half of rum. Um, I actually talked to Steve Akeley, cause Steve Akeley um, makes a lot of eggnog. <laughs> And he knows a lot of good people in the industry. And he said the higher proof, the better. Um, it just has a lot better flavor to it. So we're going to use Booker's. This is their 2020 batch, um, batch one, Granny's batch. So we're going to do a cup and a half of that. So I have a half cup, so I'm going to do three of them. And then I'll probably drink the rest. Hey, go. So you want to use a higher quality bourbon and something that you really love. Um, we don't add any vanilla or anything to this. So you're really getting all the vanilla flavors from the bourbon. What kind of rum are you using? So we're going to do the same thing with the rum. It's going to be a cup and a half. So we're going to use three of them and we are using Plantations OFTD. This is our overproof rum. Um, so this is actually, what is this? 138 proof. Plantation is a very good brand. I don't know of any other ones that have that high proof. Yeah. So this is a quite alcoholy drink. Uh, the rum, this is a blend of Guyana, Barbados, and Jamaica, if I remember. Jamaica, Guyana, Barbados. Yep. So this Plantation is a cheaper rum. This was like 30 bucks or less. It's still high quality though. And that's a liter. And Jamaican rum has a certain funk to it. 
that will really show through on this. If you like funk, there's some, get some higher proof Jamaican, straight Jamaican. But this one did really well in the blend and the flavor really punched through. That was the main flavor note that I got out of the rum was the Jamaican funkiness. I'm just saying when I put that Booker's in there, it was really good. Smells, smells. Booker, Smelling good. Yeah, I mean, we're not adding any flavor other than seasoning, right. so the the better the bourbon, the better the nog is going to taste. Um, so we, it calls for a quarter teaspoon of ground salt, kosher salt, so they don't want using iodized yeah. salt. So we just have a sea salt grinder, and honestly, I just kind of, if you don't cook, please don't do this. <laughs> Measure it out. So quarter teaspoon for that whole thing. Quarter teaspoon. Just, I don't know what it does. Yeah, it must, must do something. No, um, just so not much. We're going to bring our egg mixture back in here. I'm going to clean that off a little bit. We're going to give this guy a little whiskey whiskey. You already put whiskey in it. Look, smarty pants. All right. Now you're going to incorporate these slowly into each other. So I just kind of take about half of it and I just kind of start blending with just the first half. And you can see, I don't know how well you guys can see, but the, the color and the consistency starts to change. And I don't feel any anything in there, nothing gummy coming out, so I'm gonna pour the rest in. that off a little bit and get the rest of this out. All right. All right, you guys, and as simple as that. Quick note, question, thought. Mm -hmm. For the eggs, you want to use pasteurized, right? If you're worried, yes. Um, Alton specifically put in his recipe that it's a dozen eggs, just the yolk. You can use pasteurized if you're worried. Um, I think in this case, the alcohol is going to kill off pretty much anything that's going to hurt you. So, I mean, if you're a germaphobe or you don't really like egg or you like eggnog, but not, you know, if, it what, kinda freaks if me you're out. wishy-washy about it. Um, if you would get sick from eggs, I think I'd be dead. I drink a lot of whiskey sours and a lot of eggnog. Yeah. Um, pasteurized does reduce the chance by a lot. So, but there is a tiny chance. So, I mean, but there's so much alcohol. I don't in see, I don't see an issue with it. You drink this much. This is also <laughs> a good cure for COVID. I have not got it yet. I'll say it's because of this. John's dad said that he doesn't get COVID because of the fact that- I don't get sick at all because of whiskey. He drinks bourbon, but. So here it is, guys. This is the final recipe. So Alton Brown um, put in his notes that he recommends that you age it. Um, this needs to go into sealed containers into the fridge for at least 14 days if you can keep it around that long. John barely can, <laughs> but he said the longer that you age it, obviously the better it's gonna taste. So he's never kept it more than three months just because he can't keep it around that long. It's super easy to make if you want it. it uh, you guys can see it makes quite a bit. So, I mean, we're going to fill up these ball jars and John will hopefully save me some for Christmas. If not, I'll be back at it again. <laughs> Couple quick thoughts. Um, the aging it didn't seem to make a difference. We did that last batch like three months ago or three weeks ago. Um, the taste didn't really change at all for me, so I don't really I think you can drink it right away. I don't think you should go longer than a month. Yeah, personally, I don't think I would, but I mean, Alton said he kept it yeah. for three months and he was okay. If you he don't said know maybe who upwards he is. of a year if you really wanted to. But I don't, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, he's the expert. Yeah. We'll run off what he says. Um, so John's going to post this recipe either in the comments or he'll, you know, put it somewhere around so you guys can jot it down. Otherwise, you guys can message us. We can send it to you either way if you're interested in trying, you know, trying it out for yourselves and seeing what you think. So you the recipe, not, not... Yeah, we're not sending you eggnog. Not perishable Sorry. through the mail. No perishables. <laughs> we're not overnight in eggnog anytime soon. All right, if you want to start pouring it, I'll just fast forward.
All right, so how many did that give you? So these are half pint jars and we got 13 of them. Half pint seems to be the perfect uh, serving for at night. And eggnog is very rich. This is more of a custard nog because we didn't use any egg whites. So it's a little thicker. It's not as frothy. I don't know what would be if you added whites. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I would highly suggest using ball jars. They hold up better than Kerr. Kerr. Um, the other brands, Indian, some whatever. There's a few others, but ball always hold up. You don't have to cook these. You don't have to heat, treat, boil, whatever you call that. Do wash your jars before you use them. Standard. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Anything else? There, there you, you have, have it. it. <laughs> Leave a comment if you have tried this whiskey and let us know what you thought. Please like and share us to social media, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to leave a suggestion for our next review. Thanks for watching!